you think about refugees? Imagine, if you will, trying to dig your car out from under this foot of snow, or in the case of this SUV, it looks like two feet of snow on top of this one for some reason. Anyway, it's the Boston area's first official blizzard in more than two years. The nor'easter blew through New England quickly, but it packed a wallop. Whipping winds and blinding snow pummeled Cape Cod. It even brought a rare weather phenomenon Thunder snow. Do you hear that? That's thunder snow, yes. In Rhode Island, this home was damaged by lightning. The storm forced the shutdown of Interstate 95 in Rhode Island. Despite pleas from officials to stay off the roads, up and down the Northeast, trucks flipped over and cars spun out off the road. An SUV plowed into this house in New Hampshire. The driver was taken to the hospital. And in Worcester, Massachusetts, the hilly streets were practically impassable. Just trying to turn it around up there and end up sliding right around the corner here. Some of the worst conditions were along the coast where massive waves battered homes. People here have been in the thick of this blizzard most of the day with heavy snow and high winds not only whipping up those waves, but leaving many people here without power. Following the quake, thousands of terrified residents fled their homes and with many running to higher ground, fearing that a tsunami would hit the coastal city of more than 152,000 people. However, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center of the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration said there was no tsunami threat from the earthquake. The earthquake's center was traced at a depth of 10 kilometers, and the epicenter was about 13 kilometers east of the city of Surigao. Officials also added that most of those killed had died due to falling objects. The disaster knocked out both power and water services in Surigao city and surrounding areas, which are expected to be restored by Sunday, but it may take as much as three days to bring back water services. The twister that tore through this part of Matagorda County left a mark, and it was a mean one. And I looked up in the sky and I seen the twisters, and it was one of them bouncing twisters. The tornado passed within 200 yards of a Van Vleck Middle School packed with children, plowing into Gary Ashton's boyhood home instead. Its sole occupant, his beloved sister. Just by the grace of God, the, 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 the part of the house that, wasn't, that didn't collapse, that's the room she was in. Turns out close calls on this day in Van Vleck were common. But we've got about 25 structures that have been uh, identified as damaged, either the roof blown off or completely gone. When the twister hit, it completely flipped this mobile home. A mother and her two children were inside. 18 other trailers were left virtually untouched. Good fortune that would hold for the trio tossed by tornadic winds. She just grabbed both of the kids and just laid on top of them and then the trailer flipped and you know all the belongings then landed on top of her. But um, you know motherly instinct kicked in and she just she kept her baby safe. It's an outcome folks in this storm rattled town gladly accept on a rough day that could have been so much worse. Three injuries is really it's a bad deal but it's a good deal. It's better than a fatality I think. I'm just gonna say thank you Jesus. Thank you. Call it an unwelcome surprise. This landslide spilling onto I-5 this afternoon just north of Woodland. In doing so, closing all of those northbound lanes. The driver of this black truck able to get out of it. Thankfully, no one was hurt. The I-5 is the busiest road in Washington State. Anytime we have a slide adjacent to one of our major routes, it, you know, it's a concern, and especially when there's traffic on, uh, on the highway. 
WASHDOT CREWS AND WASHINGTON STATE TROOPERS QUICK TO THE SCENE TAKING A LOOK AT WHAT WAS LEFT BEHIND. WE WERE SEEING SLIDES THAT WE HAVEN'T SEEN BEFORE IN AREAS THAT uh, AREN'T, aren't uh, KNOWN uh, TROUBLE SPOTS. THE WET WEATHER HASN'T BEEN MUCH HELP. I'M TOLD CREWS ARE CONSTANTLY KEEPING AN EYE ON THINGS, LOOKING FOR ANY MOVEMENT. THERE, there ARE SOME SIGNS THAT tip, TIP US OFF TO uh, POTENTIAL TROUBLE. IT MIGHT BE SOME DIRTY WATER IN THE DITCH THAT WASN'T THERE, SOME ROCKS THAT ARE IN THE DITCH THAT WEREN'T THERE THE DAY BEFORE. AND TONIGHT, EVEN MORE EYES ON THIS SLIDE. So we're going to monitor this through the night uh, and then try to get another lane open as soon as possible, perhaps tomorrow, but we still need to go and assess the side, the hillside. Más probable que fue un fenómeno natural, se se dio un crecimiento masivo de algas, que es un afloramiento y eso provocó eh, eh, un, un gasto de excesivo oxígeno y eso hace que las, los animales que están aquí en gran cantidad eh, se, se, se queden sin, sin poder respirar. Pues probablemente eso es lo que podría ser de, de lo que tenemos ahorita, pero igual se manejaba que podía ser un contaminante.